Hello everybody, I'm Chris and welcome back to Richmond. You can see in front of you my beautiful signal box and in front of the signal box just here and just there you'll see some point running has started to appear. This point running here is just put in place for now just to see how it looks but this point running here uh, most of it is glued apart from just there is glued in and we've started to put it all in place. So this signal is just uh, a non-working uh, ratio kit that is just blue tacked to the ballast. We'll be gluing that in at some point. Now these rods are the Wills point rodding that you've seen me using in a previous video. Now that will have to be ripped out because in said video the layout was in my old house and as you are well aware by now we've now moved house best part of two years ago and the layout is now in a large garage and the layout has been extended several times since so the point rodding uh, got ripped up just prior to the layout being extended and I've now started to reassemble it now it's not perfect by any means I mean, you can see some kinks and dodgy bits and it's I'll just take them out of there because they don't need to be there anymore they're woefully overscale but as they're plastic unfortunately it's never going to be true to scale so it's always going to be difficult to do now the seven rods here on the real richmond they've been about nine or ten and i've decided that instead of using ten or more rods which would be like stupidly wide i thought i'd just for the sake of compression and compromise that we would just use seven rods so this point here um the platform's in the way of any rodding because uh, it needs to be a facing point lock so we've got some dummy point motors so there'll be a dummy dummy point motor put on there we'll try a bit of ballast that's not glued down we'll sort that out in a bit so yeah this point will have a dummy point motor on it and as we'll I believe this point here just to save on rods and then if we just pan around a bit more there's some more rodding there so there'll be three rods from here continuing round towards the crossover which is just over there where the uh, G5 is sitting and there don't need to be any facing point locks on those because they're all trailing crossovers and trailing points and points coming out of the goods yard so what we're doing is we're, we're, we're just doing it slowly just to see if we can get as, as good as we can and we're reusing if we just tilt down here we're reusing the rodding that i put down previously now unfortunately because i've glued it down quite well a lot of it um isn't usable i mean there's compensators and cranks and stuff that i can't use because I made a right mess of, of, of trying to lift them and I binned a lot of it because I didn't think I was going to use it again and I only kept this stuff because there was so much of it I thought well I'll keep it just in case I find a use for it or someone else wants to use it and they can have some but I looked at options to make point running because obviously point running is, is a big thing especially on a, a steam era layout a little branch line with mechanical signaling and I could use either the Wills point rodding, as you see here, the MSE or Wizard Models point rodding, which is basically cast metal uh, point rodding stools with fine wire, either square or round wire, which is a, a bit true to scale, but there's a lot of fiddly pieces. There's like frets of um, etched cranks and wheels and stuff, which, to be honest with you, I wasn't really looking forward to using because it it looked really fiddly and I think you'd have to solder some of it to make it worthwhile and my soldering skills aren't fantastic so oh there's also the DCC concepts working point rodding now that would have been an option had I not already gone for motorized points if I hadn't put point motors under every point I may well have gone for the DCC concepts option although I think it would have taken a lot of work to get the point rodding working properly and it's not cheap either it's it's very good quality stuff 
as always with DCC Concepts, but it, it's not cheap and it would have cost me a lot of money. Um, the Wills kits, while they're not cheap for, for per kit, you don't get, really get an awful lot for your money. And I'm out of cranks and compensators and stuff, so I've got to buy another kit in the next few days so I can pr progress with it. In the meantime, if I just pan the camera down, this arrived this morning. So this is from, as you can see, it's from Scale Model Scenery. And they are four foot high concrete posts with wire fencing. And it says that builds one meter of fencing. So it's not an awful lot and I'll probably have to buy some more, but it will be enough for me to start just behind the signal box and extend just round to the start of the curve there. So at least I'll make a start sort of bringing this scenery to life. The next project to do is building the Priory up here. So ignore the, the scatter that's stuck to the, the backboards. There'll be a back scene stuck to that in due course. And just here in front of you will be uh, the ruins of St Martin's Priory. Uh, I'm still deciding whether to leave this as scatter or to add static grass. So when we get the fences up, we'll see what it looks like. And then we may order some static grass and either make or buy a static grass applicator. Um, they're not cheap, sadly. So I may have to decide whether to build one myself for pennies or buy one for a bit more. Now back to this fencing. So it builds a meter of fencing. You've got the fence posts on a fret, laser cut wood and a roll of fine wire. So what we need to do, we need to paint the fence posts and then cut them from the fret, mark out some holes for starting behind the signal box and then running all the way down and drill some holes in the baseboard. I've got a pin vise for that just so we go nice and slow and then we can plant the fence posts and then start feeding wire through. So I'm looking forward to this. So let's see how we get on. While it's not that pleasant a day today, it is dry right now. So I'm going to use this opportunity just to give them a coat of cheap gray primer. Just to give them a bit of a concrete look. So here goes. So what we do, we'll just let that side dry for a few minutes, and then come back and do the other side. So we've got the grey paint on the fence post now. Now we'll use a bit of satin black, just a bit of overspray to make it look a bit more weathered. So here goes. So just a very light overspray dusting. So what I use to make a sort of concrete effect. So I did the same for my platforms. So when that's dry, we'll do the other side. In fact, we'll just flip it over now because the overspray sort of dries pretty much straight away and we're only giving it a light dusting so just excuse the rattling just to keep the, the paint agitated there we go and that's that so what we're doing a bit is cut the holes in the scenery measure them cut them out and then we'll start inserting the posts and gluing them in and then when that's dry we can start throwing some wire through so we've got the fence posts here, we've painted them and weathered them a bit. So now we just need to carefully cut them from the fret using a knife. Not to be too precise as the cut won't be visible. So we've got a few cuts off there. And let's just have a look and see. How are we getting on? So the holes aren't blocked, the holes are still okay. So basically what we're going to do when we've cut all these off, we're going to start looking at fixing them onto the layout. So let's just stop that for now. And you'll see just over here, you can make out a line of marks that I've put into the scenery. So that would be the line of the fence. And they're just marks I've made with a marker pen. And then what we'll do is we'll use this pin vise and just to carefully drill a two millimeter hole. 
return to the mark and the hole just goes into the plaster bandage hillside and into the polystyrene Let's make a nice and then what we'll do is with a bit of glue stuck on it and there's a marker on there so we'll just pop a bit of glue on the fence post and then just pop it into the hole like that and then when the glue's dried on that we'll thread the wire through so as you can see here i've started adding the fence posts they are very very fiddly and small so you see here they've got if we can focus on it nope not too close so they have holes in them there are a row of four holes tiny minute little holes and there is a mark just there that shows me how far to push the hole in uh, push it in the hole rather so what we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of glue just around the bottom of the post so we're using neat pva as i say that's probably a bit too much and then we'll just push it in to the next hole or try and push it in without dropping it so just try and make sure it's straight and it's down to the depth mark on the post and that looks quite good so there's enough in this pack to do one meter of fence which will be enough for now this is the start of the long side fence um, there'll be more on the river side of the line and as the, the scenery progresses towards Darlington there'll be more so I've not progressed the scenery any further because I need to put more back scene up and I have run out of wood I think I may have one piece remaining but I need some uh, some uprights to hold the back scene on and then we'll carry on round so I'll carry on and you'll see the finished results in a moment so it's the next day and um, we've come back out to the garage look at these fence posts and they are all in now all the way down to there and they're all glued in fairly solid so now begins the laborious task of feeding all the wire through so it's this wire it's like 0.4 mil wire it's quite um quite thin so let's slowly thread it through so here you can see the finished fence i didn't want to bore you with a long video of me installing it the instructions uh, that come with the fence are quite self-explanatory you just have to be very very careful threading the wire through the fence posts unfortunately i wasn't anywhere near as careful as i wanted to be as this one broke and unfortunately one down towards the end there broke as well and this wire here is a little bit uh, tangled up well not tangled up it's just not, it's bent and not straight now it doesn't look too bad I'm, I'm happy with the overall effect i may have to give it a little bit of a wash um, I don't mean like wash it but I've, I've got a, a bottle of wash that I can use just to tone it down a bit and let, make the fence less bright and also while we're here I'm adding a little bit of line side furniture so this signal here I've just glued in I've also added a dummy point motor there and a dummy point motor there so they don't interfere with the operation of the points and the whole scene is starting to come together now so I'm really happy with, with this fence and it's from I don't know if I uh, told you before scale model scenery and it's their LX37700 and it builds just over one meter of fencing which it has so I need a couple more packs I'll probably need a lot more packs to be honest with you and uh, the hillside's really starting to come together now so uh, I may add a few little clumps of foliage at the bottom of the fence there and uh, this scatter not really that hard wearing 
although it looks all right and where the browns come through it's the soil that i put on previously so it doesn't look too bad it just looks like bare earth which is kind of the effect i wanted so i hope you've enjoyed this little video it's not a how-to by any stretch uh, i'm just showing you know, the, the, the next update to the layout and at uh, the point running is also progressing as you can see there i haven't done any more since uh, a couple of days ago when we started filming the video but when i get another running kit we'll be hopefully making strides with that if you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and please feel free to comment i will reply to every comment that is left within a day or two and thank you for watching and i'll see you soon bye for now